To be the best, you need the best. Enter the Predator Helios 300, a gaming laptop that takes power to an all new level. Equipped with a 7th gen Intel Core processor and Aeroblade 3D fan, discover the VR ready Predator Helios 300 today. Go to Acer.com, click on Store, and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off plus free ground shipping on a Predator Helios 300 laptop, including already discounted models. Offer valid through April 30th, 2018, and limit it to one per qualified order. Birds here, ready for another episode of Cruisable Radio. And I'm Swain, ready to record. And I'm Bones. Wait a second. Okay, Walmart You're Bones. Sure. Is it you, Bones? This doesn't sound like Bones. Oh, I'm totally Bones. <laughs> well, I'm convinced. All right, let's let's Bo- onto the show. <laughs> it's just what Bones would say. I had that dream again last night, where my car had trouble stopping, and I crashed my car head on into myself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crucible Radio. I know we had you going there for a sec in this intro, but uh, we've got a special guest host with us tonight. He could not join us. Bones, that is. So instead, we've got the one, the only, Mr. Cami Cakes Welcome. joining us. To guest host. Welcome. It's calcium cakes now because I'm the new Bones and it's good for your bones. <laughs> but- <laughs> Oh, uh, this is a this is gonna be a fun episode. We got a lot to talk about this week. We got um, we got things happening, things changing, things to do, and uh, and this week we've got uh, we've got it's been a while since we did this, Wayne. We got some questions. Yeah, no, we uh, we sent out for some questions on the Twitters. Uh, I think next week we're gonna do uh, questions from our Patreon. So. Uh, If you want to support us on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash crucible radio. We will take anything that you're willing to support us with. (laughs) Uh, It helps pay for engineer Andrew to edit the podcast, uh, the graphic design for uh, the YouTubes, the video editing for the YouTubes. uh, All that uh, comes from y'all's support. So crucible radio at patreon.com. All right. Let's get warmed up. We, we normally do a lightning round question section. I think these these will be fun. Let's do these through the course of the episode. What's this first question? All right. Uh, Biotech asks, when will drunk birds be drunk again? <laughs> I have a <laughs> oh, feeling. <you> know what? <laughs> uh, what a good timing, Mr. Biotech. Um, I find myself, maybe you can tell my mic sounds a little bit different. I find myself in the great state of Georgia, in a hotel room in Atlanta, way too late at night. <laughs> and, it's not um, that late. I guess you're I mean, used, used to recording at like 8 p.m. 8 p.m., yeah. I still can do stuff after. Um, and, uh, you know, it's Thursday. I've had a couple. I actually tried a new drink tonight. It's um, fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's, uh, it's called... Um, a Colorado Bulldog. Have you heard of it? That sounds like uh, something that's not appropriate for this podcast. <laughs> it's um okay. Here's how you make a Colorado Bulldog. You combine a shot of Kahlua, a shot of vodka, a shot of cream. You with me so far? Yep, sounds good. <laughs> Barely. Need some coffee in yeah, there now. And then, <laughs> then you top it off with Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> And here's the thing. I was um, a coworker of mine was like, no, it's it's good. It tastes like a Tootsie Roll. You got to try it. Um, I tried it and it's weird. And uh, I don't think I like it. I don't think it's good, but it's not bad. What part of that makes it Colorado, though? Um, I don't know. They have weird taste in Colorado. <laughs> I expected it to be something like a Rocky Mountain oyster where it's not like the exact name and has nothing to do with Rocky Mountains or oysters or Colorado or bulldogs. Who knows? It seems to it seems to me that people falsely apply things to the great state of Colorado. 
<laughs> I mean, it's better than saying it tastes like balls. But uh, no, this one actually tastes like, um, it was weird. Like it's, it's, it's actually, it's not bad. Like I enjoyed drinking it. Um, but the flavor I got when I tasted it was capers. Oh, go figure. Yeah. Not, not a <laughs> good caper and milk drink. Anyways, I'm okay, Ooh. but I'm a couple in biotech. We're having fun. <laughs> We're having fun this week. <sighs> <sighs> Man, a lot going on. Um, yeah. Well, I don't even know where we start. Um, hey, uh, Swain, Cammy, you guys buy some plane tickets? Uh, no, because they're going to buy them for us. Oh, sh- they're buying them for us? Okay, that makes us so much better. I think so. They asked for my flight information. Shit. Uh, I feel bad that I'm not going now. This is a this is a thing. This is like a weird semi-unannounced thing, except for all the people t- on Twitter talking about it. Um, but Bungie's doing like a player summit kind of thing. They got a lot of people going um, nominally to like play test new stuff and give feedback and get footage. Like they've done stuff like this before, but this is like a big thing with a lot of folks going. Not quite Destiny 2 reveal event, but um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it seems that they are reaching out to uh, I think Deej said it best in the TWAB that they're reaching out to some new faces, uh, some older faces, um, different sections of the community. They're trying to get kind of like a good cross section of what the community consists of. So not just PVP, uh, it'll involve people that are really into strikes and fashion and art and lore and even some PVP. Yeah, they for sure got the the PVP side covered. I I wish I could go. I I had a pre <laughs> I, I had a work thing. When don't I have a work thing? Um but it sounds exciting. I I I I wonder what kind of stuff you guys are going to get a chance to play. I'm beyond excited. I'm hoping it's going to be like a Willy Wonka golden ticket or like enter the dragon <laughs> tournament or something like that. Just more than they're actually getting at with the description. So Kimmy's got a golden ticket. <laughs> so Kimmy, you you didn't get to go to the Destiny reveal event, right? No, I didn't, unfortunately. But I would say this is arguably way more fun. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> like about it, that. Looking back on it, everyone had such high hopes for D two. It would have been super cool to see it firsthand. It was. It was. It was a good time. It was a little overwhelming for sure the first time around. Mm. And looking back on the reveal event, it kind of, I don't know, it didn't really show it off too much. It was like, hey, here's some, here's a strike. It looks great. You can play it on PC. Uh, Here's like six guns um, and one new subclass. So, um, So pretty much just like the beta, but before the beta existed. Even like Got a it. more stripped down beta, it was like you didn't even have it all there. So we have been to Bungie Studios before and it is a hell of a time. So uh, you will be <laughs> well taken care of. You get to I meet tried. a lot of really they awesome They hit me people. with that water spray bottle every time I get near. <laughs> ah, get away, <laughs> Cammy. <laughs> oh, they're going to let the stray cats in this time. Um, no, it's it's. I, I think that was... I think that's the exciting part. Is you get to go in the studio, you get to you get to meet a whole bunch of folks, see how it works. Whereas the D two of reveal event was like a big warehouse, and gotcha. I think the main thing I remember was like just getting to play PC for the first time and going, "Ooh, this is good." But no, <laughs> like this is this is cool, and I'm I'm interested. Like, okay, a bunch of people are gonna get to go check out Bungie Studio. That's cool. A bunch of people are gonna get you know some pre release footage for their channels. We'll get some sneak peek stuff. That's cool. Um, but the part of this that I'm interested in that that as far as I know, aside from like, you know, internal builds and all that they've never really done is it sounds like this is really sort of the destiny equivalent of what the division did. They had their um, ETF uh, elite task force um, where they basically brought in a bunch of players to play the new balance patch and give feedback on it. And at a point where it's, you know, still not, you know, still early enough that they could Make changes. take that feedback yep. and incorporate it in. Elite Task Force sounds like they all got like bomber jackets and like <laughs> nicknames, like Goose. It does. Elite Task Force <laughs> is what I would describe the quick play playlist mentality. 
Uh, Suit up, boys. We're going in. We're I want a cool shirt with a cool nickname after this. Uh. Oh, I maybe we should just make our own like satin jackets with snakes on the back or something. We we have time to make sure it's before this event. We could all show up with a loot <laughs> task force show shirt. Up with a satin jacket. That that's a plan. We're gonna work on that. Uh, um, but then you you did hit on the division uh, ETF and said that seems to be the source of a lot of people thinking. Uh, well, it was behind the revival of the. The division, because we all tried yeah, it when it came out, division. and it was not the best. And a lot of people quickly dropped it, myself including. We did one episode on this this podcast did about not go over well. Uh, people hated it, and <laughs> we all dropped it, and we didn't talk about it. But it, the creators of the division went behind, like kept going at it. They didn't give up, um, and they created something that's actually really well loved nowadays. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you, you know, that was, I think uh, Division was in a very different spot where people's expectations were pretty low, whereas with Destiny, people's expectations are uh, extremely high. Um, but I think even if, you know, the end result of this is not the totally, you know, reimagined game that people are hoping for, that the fact that this is a big gesture that they're making, that they're bringing in a lot of different voices and they're talking through it, that, that's that's something. Uh, kudos for that. Um, yeah, good luck. Bunchy Studios is not that big. I don't know how they're going to pack some. We went when it was empty. Some 30 people in there. So that was yeah. really brutal. Oh, nice. I'd like to see the people in it. <laughs> I'm personally really excited. Like I describe it to my friends in this way, that if I had a time machine, I would go back in time, give like my younger self a high five and be like, you made it, kid. And then just abruptly leave it. <laughs> <laughs> just look around like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Goes back to playing Halo. Like, like, what the hell is that? If, if I was a little kid and future me showed up, I would either go, who, who the fuck is this adult stranger trying to high five me right now? Or was oh, that me? Oh, <laughs> is, that, is that how it goes? What do you do with your hair, man? That's... I'm here for the future. Don't delete the supremacy. (laughs) (laughs) I have no clue what that means. Um, But we're going to try. Like, I know for us personally here at Crucible Radio, uh, I'm going to I will be going uh, and I will be hopefully trying to get some recordings while there. We'll see uh, if Bird ships this uh, recorder out to me uh, quick enough. Set you up, man. Um, If I remember, I'm going to set you up. No, I'm going to remind you. Uh, Thank you. I'll try and get some clip. It's. Uh, we'll have to probably pass them through Deej to see if they're okay to be on the show. But uh, for the most part, we'll do our best to get... I may even ask some questions of the people that went uh, to the event and see what they think uh, without spoiling anything. I'm sure there's lots of NDAs. uh, Yeah, let's figure out exactly what the limits of these NDAs are. That's the important part. That's in like two weeks. So hopefully that'll... uh, Oh, that's exciting. That'll come out soon. Well, have fun, guys. Uh, it's talking about the future, um, let, let's go to our next question. This one is from Josh. Mr. Elefante, what's up, buddy? I like this guy. Go check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he makes some good videos. Anyways, Josh asks, uh, we currently have three subclass elements in D2, Solar, Void, and Arc, and eventual D2 expansion drops, and we get a brand new element and new subclass for all three Guardian types. This is hypothetical. What's the new element and subclass? I'm like, can go first? Okay, I got this. I want ice yeah. so that I can be like, Ooh. where's my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's clever. So if the element is ice, what does the subclass do for the class that you play the most? Let's see. I play a lot of them equally, so I'm going to have to think of something creative here. You know the disorienting effect from the melee? Sure. That should almost be sure. like that, but for the warlock. Like, you put up your hand, and a cold mist of air freezes multiple people. So the Blade Dancer one, or Arc Strider, sorry, is a single person on Bottom Tree, but this one has the potential to hit multiple people, but maybe not do damage with it. Hmm. So if you see that group of people, them. you freeze them. Exactly. I'm picturing something like like May from Overwatch, where there she throws go. something in the middle, and like a grenade. And that is like the area of effect uh, for the super. And you trap people and you just get real easy, like cleanups where you punch yep. everyone to death. 
And when you pop your super, you're going to be saying something like, sorry to break, presses F, the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they cannot bring the emote wheel fast enough so we can bring in all of the available ice puns. There's or just so like many. an emote where you're like shivering. Yep. <laughs> What, what about you, birds? What, cool do you, off. what element that's not ice that you would like to Hunter say? gets an icicle oh, knife. Man. Um, I'm really struggling to come up with a serious answer for, for this. Uh, deep fryer. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're skipping um, you. Yeah, yeah, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Swain, what do you got? Uh, I would love to see uh, something along the vice lines of poison where you just go back to Thorn and everybody can't see. It's all green all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't work with Capri. Uh, <laughs> some real mixed feelings some on that. Damage over time, some uh, mm-hmm. uh, invisibility, of course, uh, quickness. That you're very neat. fast. I don't know. Needs to have a polka dot shader because you're doing dot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's um. I think in addition to the emote wheels, they need to add a cami terrible. Pun yeah, I'm never going to be invited well. for the show again, so I'm savoring. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, get it out of your system. You just go for it. Uh, okay, I got I got a legit answer. Um, I'm going to say the element is like growth or life or earth or something, and it's all just about like crazy plant stuff and vines and. Um, like you have some ability that like that you use to kick off recovery in your nearby teammates and your grenade is like throwing uh, like throwing a rift out like you throw it to the spot you want to go to and it just charges up your guys who are in it. And also you have a vine attack. of some <laughs> Vine whip. Vine whip. Ooh. Yep. I thought Earth Earthbender when you said that. Future. Yep. And then the primary nation attack. Idea. There you go. Or yeah, you could just say earth and then it could also be like you become hard like a rock and turn into a small ball and you roll towards your enemies. All right. That's enough uh, speculation. <laughs> we don't we don't normally do that, but um, we did have a pretty interesting uh, TWAB this week that covered uh, some small changes, some weapon types some slot potential they they kind of covered their uh their bungee bounty uh stream from the other day where you could match up against bungee uh play against them in mayhem on pc and if you won you got a pretty sweet emblem so this is a pretty good transcription but let's not forget ramshackle was there first <laughs> Uh, they probably pulled it from Ramshackle, to be honest. <laughs> right, yes. Did somebody write this down? Oh, wait. I know one person who did. Uh, no, we, we, we got some good stuff in here. So uh, not a ton of specifics, um, but I did, like, uh, I did like one item talking about time to kill. Um, and in particular, uh, Vigilance Wing. Uh, and the, there was a couple of questions, but this one in particular. Will Vigilance Wing be allowed to reign supreme in the Crucible, or will we see any fine-tuning in the near future? And I like the answer. That old uh, Ham Slammer, he thinks these things through. While we continue to adjust the sandbox, we are not planning an outright nerf to Vigilance Wing at this time. We don't believe slowing Vigilance Wing's TTK in a world where our players are asking for a faster TTK is the right call. That's the right answer right there. Instead, we should just be adjusting more weapons up to a level where they can camp- compete. I believe you'll find a few retuned exotics that can do that in the Season 3 exotic update. Uh, so we already know about about Sturm. Sturm going to get charged up by Drang and uh, Two-Tap, apparently, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I think, we'll have, I think we'll have some exotics coming up to pace here. I'm scared of the fighting line buff. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I, I like fighting line feels like it's kind of right on the cusp right now where if it was just a little bit better, it would get used a lot more. And it could be a couple things, right? Like you could make it uh, release to detonate. You could make a one hit kill. You could make it um, just a little bit easier to explode near where the people yep. are. Uh, yeah, that could be a toughie. I think those are all good changes, um, though. It looks like they're trying to make exotics worthy of the exotic slot so that you always have to make mm-hmm. an active choice 
about where you're getting that enhanced TTK or special exotic in quotations feature that they offer. I do like the option of like, I th- <laughs> once the uh, exotics become a little more exotic feeling, you get the option of like the engagement distance you want that special ttk to be yep because like obviously Mm -hmm. uh sturm will be like a kind of close ttk whereas like you still have visual visual and swing right now which is like mid mid to long uh range ttk a quick ttk yep i feel like there was something they never quite really got right in d1 like in d1 for like the first two thirds of it, it was just, okay, use a primary hand cannon. And everyone had Thorn or Last Word in their primary slot. And then by the end of it, we were all just rocking our Aos Lunas. Uh, or, you know, if you're feeling sassy, a slightly different uh, legendary hand cannon. And then it was just like, all right, yeah, you know, pick up Truth for free in the heavy slot or something. Yep. Um, and I think, yeah, if we see a bunch of them come up, then you really do have a choice whether you want to run in in any slot. I mean, hopefully there's going to be be some different options. But even just having two kind of semi-primary slots to play with, so you can still have a primary weapon and, um, hey, the exotic I use that's also a primary happens to be in the energy slot. Uh, I just mix it up a little bit. I like the current system, but... That's just me. I know it's changing, probably for the better, because we, at the end of the day, want a population. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yep. way too easy to match on Rumble. Yep. <laughs> All-Star Rumble. I mean, so they talked about this. They didn't really talk much about it, but they did say that we're going to get, you know, like a first look this summer at some weapon slot changes. I kind of suspect that there's, it is unlikely, especially considering all the guns that we already have, that they're going to go back to the primary special heavy thing. Um, but at the same time, it'll be a little bit more flexible than it is now. I mean, who knows what they'll do here. From from the recap of the stream, they basically said that, like, yeah, we understand you want this, um, but it feels like they still want to innovate and create something that isn't just going back to that old system. Uh, Mm -hmm. try and find some sort of happy middle ground where they're still creating something that fits their vision of a better ability to balance. Cause I do think this like current system is a little bit easier for them to uh, find their, find their groove. I don't know. Uh, But they got to, like you said, they got to appeal to, you know, the masses and get people back into it. So if that's what does it. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like if they, yeah, if we're going to get snipers in the energy slot, then it just goes back to where we were, where you have to assume 90% to 100% sniper uptime versus even with like the power ammo changes, it you just don't have everyone with a sniper or a matador in there, you know, ready to whip out at any moment. Uh, and sort of what the gameplay felt like that. I'll be heavily biased when answering this one, but I don't want it to go back to all snipers. I played scrims last night and this new power ammo dropping, and these guys do not miss a shot. I don't know if you guys have been (laughs) in a lobby where their accuracy ratio is 100%, and they're killing two people as fast as the rate of fire is on different sides of the map. So they snap 90, headshot, snap another 90, headshot. (laughs) You're just wondering, what are you supposed to do to outplay that? You have to push them for the objective eventually. I don't know. Maybe for the entire player base, it plays a little a little bit differently. But for me, it just stalemates. Yeah. I mean, and, and it changes the maps, it right? Does. Like, I feel like a lot of the maps we have right now, they make sense because you don't have to treat every single medium or longer sight line as a sniper lane to avoid unless you're ready to challenge it with another sniper that... Yeah, it's just you close off big sections of the map if you have to assume that there's always a sniper looking down these lanes at all time. Yeah, I mean, we had it in D1 where you <laughs> would turn the corner on Pantheon and just get your neck like snapped, <laughs> like clean off the top of your head. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like that's something we haven't really had to worry too much about. D2 is you can freely move around and make pushes and uh, work together as a team pretty effectively because you wouldn't have to worry about someone like, you know, accidentally getting uh, sniped off a spawn. 
That and snipers sure. experience flinch, handling nerves, and a bunch of stuff that makes it harder to snipe. So it really sets apart the people who can snipe, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I can. I mean, you want snipers <laughs> to feel good, but you don't want them to feel so good that, that they're a fucking terror in any lobby. that you yeah, Exactly. Into. It's a fine line between I want everybody to be able to have fun with this, but I want people to shine at the top who have really dedicated effort to using mm-hmm. the gun. Well, what do you think about this one? Um, past sort of what they covered in the bungee bounty, uh, we got the announcement that Rumble is going down from 8 to 6. And we can talk about Rumble at length, but this particular change, Cammy, what's your take? From 8 to 6, I actually like 8. I just think the spawns are maybe the issue. Maybe change the spawn timer, the overshield length, or something of that nature. I don't think it necessarily has to go down to 6 because it does slow down and go to time. On PC, the population's a little bit low, so getting a 6-man lobby is a realistic option. So when I play the 6-man there... It goes really slow and goes to time. Yeah, I agree. I we, we, we should talk about Rumble in depth a bit later. But, um, I mean, I remember what it was like in even just some of the D1 maps playing Rumble where, like, you really got to go looking for people. And, again, it's a fine line. But if given a choice between, like, spawning and then having to really run off the spawn to go find somebody and only finding them because you know where to look because you know the spawns mm-hmm. on this map – versus wake up and keep your head on a swivel because it's go time from the moment you spawn in, I would take the ladder. That's what I love about Rumble as well. In D1, it was there was chaos sometimes, but it was mostly at the top level. I'm going to patrol a section of this hallway, kill someone off spawn, mm-hmm. let's patrol the opposite, kill someone off spawn, rinse and repeat until someone tries to stop you. In 8-man Rumble, it's chaotic. You could die <laughs> from three people spawning on top of you at any moment. And I think it makes you a better player dealing with those cluster situations. Mm -hmm. Well, I I agree. And I think what you end up seeing is that, like, it's chaotic and, like, yeah, you'll get some some bad spawns. It'll happen. You'll spawn in and in a situation where you're getting pinched. There's no way you're surviving this. It happens. But at the end of the day, the good players still end up winning this new rumble. Chaos aside, like, good players still come out on top here. Um. The thing I noticed was when playing with friends, it was super enjoyable. Like it was the most fun I've had in Destiny 2, hands down. Uh, in that eight, like an eight man lobby playing on European servers, like with Fallout and friends, that was so much fun. You just you just spilled the secret right now. Yeah, and now we can't I do mean, it anymore. People Thanks, know that. No, <laughs> okay. Just bleep bleep it, Andrew. Playing along. Your- servers like other thing though i noticed is that a lot of people that were upset like i could see how this would tilt someone really quickly that didn't like that like cared really about like i need to win this like really bad like it would like it could definitely push someone the wrong way and push all the wrong buttons uh if you get killed off spawn but where i got killed off spawn it was just like i just laughed it off and i was like oh yeah i'm not <laughs> it's crazy right now, but like that's what happens. Like, I'm just gonna respawn. Hopefully, I don't spawn next to someone, and I can hopefully find a place on the map to work. But and that's Rumble. I'd say you're setting yourself up for failure if you expect to win every Rumble match because there's some inherent randomness about the spawns, who people use their supers and power weapons on, and so forth. So if you want to enjoy Rumble, you look at it as more a macro efficient way of playing. So you want to win most of your games, but don't expect to ever win all of them. And that's just by building habits that take advantage of Rumble. Like for Rumble, you kind of avoid the ones and look for the vulture, the janitor, whatever you want to call it. You might have to save abilities or super to secure a power ammo, control power ammo now. It's a different game mode. It's not a 1v1 simulator, as some people expect. You know, that that's interesting. I noticed that like when I started winning some Rumbles, I noticed that like I won rumbles the same way I won them in D1, which is pick my chunk of the map and get my patrol going, get my kills fast, make sure I recover, make sure that I'm not getting outnumbered and that I've got this area locked down. And if I was in a lobby with the other guy who is trying to do that and who's going to fight me for that area every time, I ended up losing because I was sharing my kills with him and or I just had a target painted on my back because he knew what I was up to and he was going to try and shut me down. 
Um, and that doesn't mean it's not the right way to play, but just it's 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 a good strategy that just doesn't work in every lobby. I like I liked it a lot because you D one Rumble, uh, you knew what was happening when uh, heavy ammo dropped. Like you're gonna get yeah. killed by like three rockets or be a part of like the three <laughs> rockets that the person picks up. Uh, at least with power Iron now, you're like it's like oh this is the moment in the match where it becomes a little bit more like. Destiny one was like, Oh, someone's probably going to run around with Acrius. And it's like, I remember that feeling like someone charging me with a shotgun. It like brings up this whole new moment of like, where are my engagements with this person? Like, am I trying to stay far away or did they, and now you can see in the feed, like what they picked up, like before you like a D one, you're like, oh, I don't know. Like, uh, let me inspect yeah, them. Hopefully until you die from it. Yeah. Until you yeah. die from it. Uh, but now you can be like, Oh, that guy has sniper ammo now. Like we're, I'm not going to peek or that person picked up a fusion rifle. Like my mid range is kind of out of the question right now. If I'm trying to exactly get this person, try to bait so. a pre-fire or something, you, you work with what they pick exactly. up. If it's sword or shotgun, avoid tight corners. If it's snipe, Try to get in close enough that they can't no scope, yet you can also just kill them while they're down scope. Avoid lanes. You know, there's a lot of rules. If it's rockets, jump in the air, you know? (laughs) Yeah. What? And they got one. So, like, they got one and done. Oh, yeah. Don't don't use rockets in Rumble. I, uh, I kind of like the the sort of metagame that happens around power now because. You know, in D1, it was just like, all right, they got it. Don't get killed to it. But now it's like the one time where Rumble is anything other than a race to get the most kills, which is like, okay, someone else got power. They can race faster than I can. And so it might make sense to say my main priority right now is to take their power away from me. Even if I don't get it, just make sure they don't exactly, have it Exactly, because it's a race to get so the kills. Slow them down. Yep. For me, I use the colony because I dislike power ammo. I know that sounds counterproductive, but I just grab it, shoot it across the map so nobody can have it, and then I'm like, all right, time for a primary duel. And it might give me a kill. There you go. <laughs> Get a free kill or not, you go for it. Um, I know I talked about it last week, and I got a, I got a tweet or two saying, uh, shh. Uh, but Special K Dude is right. Um, oh, my God, the lightweight grenade launchers are such a fucking blast and rumble. They're not perfect for every map, and you have to really have your flow of reloading right. But watching people just grind to a halt when you hit them with that stun grenade, you get the quick cleanup, and you're just ready to go. And you just get so many on pickup. You get six on pickup. Even picking up like a a power brick dropped by the third person who had it, you still get two of them. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. I want the Iron Banner grenade launcher because Flash and Thunder's fun. Cocoon. That's so useful for that since they only have one in the chamber. Yeah. I personally like the Truth Teller, though. It's really forgiving since you can go for Enhanced Blast. And so think of it as just the most powerful grenade launcher in the game with the caveat that you only get one shot. All right. Well, so we had a... Wow, we, we, we're, we're tangenting here. Um, we had a couple more things in the TWAB. Okay, so they talked about why they did the random game modes. It's mostly to have the biggest player pool and, and connection. Nah, it makes sense. They had the bu- bungee bounty. Um, but coming back to this exotic thing, and we, we've talked about this one a little bit before, but we got a, a, a question on Twitter. This is from Bird's Monarchy member, Hero of Light 16. What up, Andrew? This may have been asked already, but in light of the tweaks to exotics we already know about, what exotic weapon or armor piece are you looking forward to seeing changes? Uh, I, I, I think for this one, like let's just pick one of each, right? right. Uh, one weapon, one exotic armor. What do you think? Swain, what do you got? So for my exotic armor, we kind of covered it earlier. Um, I would love to see the, uh, lion rampant be worth my time. (laughs) Like, and (laughs) like, like you said, like if it offered some sort of like over the top, uh, ability like if it was like the twilight garrison of d2 like where it gives you this thing that's like so unique to that exotic that you're like yes i'm going to equip that if that's the play style i want to play um that would be great lion rampant being like so different 
and uh, making itself stand out a little bit more against, you know, obviously like right now it's pretty much for, for me, at least it's feedback fences because I want free kills. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then for weapon, I don't know. Um, I would say, I, I think it's already being worked on, but I want the rat King to be even better. It's so cool looking. I'm going to say, um, all right, for armor, I I, I got to say both of them. Um, I want to see Mechaneer's trick sleeves be interesting. Like right now, they're understandable, right? So these give you a, um, a buff to your sidearm ready and reload speed on Hunter. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But sidearms are pretty snappy already. I couldn't see necessarily using this one. I mean, it's a good one. You want to pair it with Rat King. It makes sense. Um, but I'd love to have it be something wild, right? Like... Like, give me a sidearm thing where my last bullet in the sidearm mag does double damage, like some some graviton something something or other there. Um, and then my backup answer is Winter's Guile. I think they're fine. They're just so boring and ugly. Make them look cool. Uh, I don't know what kind of buff that is. Um, for weapon, I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say the Prospector. Uh, this is the exotic <laughs> grenade launcher. It looks cool, and I guess like the exotic perk is that it's uh, it's released to detonate, but you can. It's also like full auto, so you can shoot all your grenades and detonate them all at once. Which I'm not sure I'm why clicking. that matters. Yeah, it's just like unload all of your ammo and then hope you get one lucky shot. Maybe it makes sense in PVE, but. I don't know, man. I really love grenade launchers. I really, they're just becoming my favorite power ammo weapon. And I'd love to see a, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want. I just want a wild grenade launcher that isn't just the cami spammer <laughs> <laughs> colony approach. Yeah. I don't know. Make it feel like magic. I, whatever. Cami, what okay, do you got? So I was going to say Mechaneers too, but I had an alt and that okay. was Celestial Nighthawk. Like, why not just make it hilarious in PvP and give it effort eat spear, wall hacks, armor piercing rounds? I know you only get one golden <laughs> gun, but if it goes through the entire map, that just sounds hilarious. You see somebody light up on B, B flag. <laughs> oh I got this, god. guys. I got this. Oh my god, I love that so much. That's, that's so dumb. <laughs> like, I love it. Burns a hole through the walls. That's pretty cool. Exactly. It just like straight up line rifles through the entire wall. What are they called? Like from uh, Perfect Dark or. Yeah. Well, I like that too because it's like um it turns your golden gun into almost kind of like a nova bomb, right? Like you don't use it to get the three piece or the four piece or whatever. Use it to you shut use down. it as a hard counter. Exactly. It's a shutdown. That that's cool. I like it. As for weapon, I don't really know. They all seem pretty good at this point. Maybe Darcy needs some love in PvP, even with the ammo changes, but that's about it. It needs to say a random about, fact uh, about the Guardian I'm highlighting. Like spicy ramen. <laughs> I don't know. Tells me their snipe kill counter, their favorite weapon used. And you look at them with Darcy and you're like, this player likes to use a pulse rifle. <laughs> That's a good This idea. player camps Acrius. <laughs> like looks at them. It's your little Pokedex. <laughs> so oh, so this is, a, a qu- I'm going to kind of go off script here for a second, but. Uh, this is a question that Noosk asked on Twitter earlier. Uh, he wanted to know what everybody thought about reprising exotics from Destiny 1. Um, and I wanted mm. to know uh, from both of you, what is one exotic from Destiny 1 you would like to see in Destiny 2? Uh, Google's list of Destiny I got 1 this. exotics real quick. So I had planned a video for April 20th, but that's when the Community Summit's going to be. Mm-hmm. And it was specializing on the Eternal Blazon and the Burnt Sidearm. You know, very appropriate loadout for the day. And I wanted Dragon's Breath back, just to selfishly use that in the loadout. <laughs> so I can have the Eternal Blazon, Blaze It loadouts. And I have 420 kills on the gun already. It's it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're ready to go. Um, I know Swain's going to say Queensbreaker. <sighs> yeah, that's sorry, fine. Sorry. Um, I feel like I, I really love this gun. It it was never really a competitor. 
Um, but I loved it. I loved the idea of it and I would love to have it come back, but just goosed up a little bit. So it's sort of right at that line where it's a viable choice. Um, I really love the Kvostov. Um, I like the, the quest to go get it. I liked how configurable it was and how it could be a jack of all trades thing or how it could be, especially with like locked loadouts. Now I can go into trials with my Kvostov and after the first round go, uh, Ooh, shit. I need to play this like a pulse rifle. I need a little more range. I, I'm going to be out in front. I need this thing to spray. That harder. should be the exotic for um, be able to change it in trials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This weapon could be swapped out for another. I, I just had one since you already, you blew up my spot. I'm going to change mine. I, yeah. Uh, we, we just assume the answer to change all mine questions too. that involve any gun <laughs> is uh, Queen's Breakers. If you ask Swain. I, what do you got? I want Fabian's strategy in Destiny 2, but it can shoot through your barrier. Ooh. Ooh. That seems, that seems like something that a Titan would take advantage of too. So that also goes with the theme of that being the Titan gun. Exactly. It's fitting. Fitting. Okay. I want the last word to return as a sidearm since all the nerves are being fitting. <laughs> yep. Yep. That, I mean, that just makes a lot of sense. Kind of always was. <laughs> it's, it's the long stream sidearm ever existed, but kind of always was. All right. Well, you know, we, we talked about rumble up top um, and, I'm sorry, I just like Rumble. It's my thing. If I ever had a thing in Destiny, Rumble was my thing. Um, and I also like winning Rumbles. I've uh, put a couple real handy notches in my belt since last time we talked. got a chance to play a bit more. I miss it so much, I want it back. Um, but, y- you know, we aside from what we carried over from D1, we we're still figuring, figuring things out in, in D2 Rumble. Uh, I want to ask you guys a specific question. Um... In this new D2 Rumble, even with the change from 8 to 6, uh, what's give me, give me a tip. How do you win Rumbles? What do you think is is a thing that people forget if you really want to win this thing? My answer is going to be map position. There are certain places that just have a real tactical advantage in terms of making sure that you have cover, but someone else is crossed, if that makes sense. So they're standing at a point where three or four people can shoot at them, and you're standing at a point where maybe one other person at most can shoot you. I'll give you an example. On Midtown, there's two areas, near the bonsai tree and near the garden's bush. And if you stand in the corners there, you can close off angles around you, yet also have the ability to kill people totally unaware. And that's what Rumble is. It's picking engagements to where you can rum, uh, janitor, vulture, whatever you want to call it. But just shoot people mm-hmm. who aren't shooting at you. You don't have to worry about recovery. You can play your power ammo, whatever you got to do there. But map position is the most important. I guess my tip was sort of along those same lines, but uh, not so eloquently stated. Rumble is chaotic and you got people spawning right next to each other in quick succession. And uh, it can be a bit of a free for all. There's a lot going on. Um, So you say, you know, be in a good position, be ready to do the cleanup. Swain, you had a good tip from last week. Uh, I have a different way to phrase that which is uh, just be a little bitch about it. Just, <laughs> just like, look, you're spawning at the same time as someone else. Just crouch and hide and wait for them to run some some direction and then just keep sliding after them, crouch walk after them, wait for them to get into a fight. And when they're absolute, just clean them up. And like whatever the chaos is, be the person who makes the other person goes, oh, I just keep getting <laughs> shot off a of rumble or off a of spawn. Be that guy. There's people who are getting killed off a of spawn more often than not. And then there's people who are or who are abusing the way that it works right now. Abuse it. Do it like you don't have to be the hero. You don't have to go anywhere. Just wait for the next guy to show up and you're still probably getting kills faster than everyone else. So my tip will be uh, don't be the chump uh, going to pick up power ammo. Be the guy <laughs> killing the guy who picked up the power ammo. It's a much quicker pickup if you just run by the box that's on the ground. So there you go. Word. Yep. People get crazy when they see Tunnel vision. <laughs> Give me the purple. Um, all right. I thought those were some pretty good tips, uh, but rumble's over. I don't understand Should why. <laughs> Take my baby away. Uh, we got mayhem this week. I haven't got a chance to play it yet because they don't have mayhem in Atlanta, at least as far as I know. I'm pretty um, sure what you drank earlier is technically mayhem. 
<laughs> yeah, right? my insides feel like mayhem, but that's unrelated. Why does it taste like capers? It doesn't make any sense. Where did oh. capers flavor from? Uh, it, it, but it was honestly, it wasn't bad. It was I, I enjoyed drinking it. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Um, we got mayhem this week. Uh, yeah, we played some mayhem in D two, but not go fast, styly. Uh, what do you guys think about this mayhem? It's what the name is. It's mayhem. <laughs> it's crazy. It's the There's abilities everywhere. There's power weapons everywhere. Everyone's enjoying the new Dawn Blade. Golden Gun's still around rampant because it's just point and click. And everybody dies to the explosive hammers. That too. Um, I mean, I it's the tips you can add to this would just essentially be like find a good power ammo that shuts down supers that you can do. Like be like, hey, practice your fusion rifles or practice your, you know, shotgun approach when someone is in super or sniping if that's your thing. Like no better time than now to try and snipe a super. Agreed. Um, the other thing would be just get used to your super. You're going to get a lot of them. So, uh, you know, moving around the map in super, uh, uh, countering other supers with your super. It's, That's the big you know, it's one. A good time Start to, making mental notes of that. Whenever you're in an arc strider and are fighting a sentinel, know exactly what combo is going to kill him faster than he can two tap you. Yep. And conversely, I like, I'm going to get home in time to play some mayhem. And one of the main things I want to work on, and probably mayhem is not the right place for it, but I don't care. I'll just save it for when no one else's super is up. Um, like mayhem is my chance to pop bubbles and figure out on each map, where's the spot to pop a bubble? Where am I going to not just get Nova bombed from a distance? Where am I going to bait people in or catch them unaware? Uh, yeah. That, whatever that thing you don't do is also, you got to suppress the do hell you out cheese of the bubble. Fun. Uh, I mean, what, what, what would be the point of, of not? Make, no, there are map spots. So you brought it up. Like optimal placements for the bubble. No, that actually exists, even in competitive. And the idea is that you want to put the bubble near a high piece of cover so that you can stand on the high piece of cover, have armor light, and be able to shoot out of it. And so everyone's just looking at you like, well, I can't challenge that. And you just sit and play the objective, get your power ammos. So you might have sacrificed a bubble, but it got your whole team power ammo. So you're good. All right. You do give me a spot in particular. Some where's the spot on a map I okay, can work um, on? Okay. Dead cliffs, right? Okay. Uh, B flag, power ammo spawns inside and outside, depending on the game mode. You want to focus on the outside power spawn. And if you pop the bubble as close to the cover as possible, you can stand and look at the pipes, the mill, the street, whatever you want to call it. You can see dark hall. And then you can flip around and even be able to see trucks. So you have, let's just say, 75% of the map covered with that one bubble placement. And they have to look at you while your armor to light up. And if you have a snipe, that's the best of both worlds. You're unkillable, and you have instant kill potential. I love it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to play my Titan. Just switch to Sentinel every time that map comes up. Give me one more. This, this is amusing. <laughs> Let me think. Sure is a time. This is a popular callout. Uh, Bitch Rock. I'm sure you, sure you've heard of it <laughs> from Destiny it's One. A thing. <laughs> that's a great place for a silly bubble. <laughs> Because you have a viewpoint of the grotto, a viewpoint of a little bit of the shrine, and a viewpoint of B flag and B stairs. So that's potentially two flags you can cover by yourself. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cammy. <laughs> <laughs> Scribbles notes down furiously. Nope. Uh, and in time before this episode comes out and anyone can use them against me. Before we go on, we got to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Acer. Look, ordinary is boring. You push past boundaries and towards greatness. That's what we're all about on the show. How are you going to take it to the next level? And you should expect the same from your hardware. With a cooling Aeroblade 3D fan, the Predator Helios 300 stays icy cold for hours, giving you the advantage you've been looking for. And with the 7th Gen Intel Core i7 processor, the only thing you have to worry about is how you're going to buff your next power play. Got to keep that frame rate. You got to get those snipes. You got to go pick up that power ammo. And uh, you won't look good doing it. The sleek geometric design of the Predator Helios 300 speaks for itself. It's up to you to start the conversation. So time to level up with the Predator Helios 300. Go to Acer.com. 
click on store and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off, plus free ground shipping on a Predator Helios 300 laptop, including already discounted models. Offer valid through April 30th, 2018 and limited to one per qualified order. That's offer code CRUCIBLE, C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E, at checkout. <gasps> There's that noise again. I never get used to that. Anyways, what were we talking about? Uh, all right. Um... Let's go to our next section. I, I mean, I can't believe we haven't really talked about it. I guess this would be the sort of thing we talk about in an interview. Um, so I guess let's let's switch gears a little bit. Cam, we haven't talked to you since Go Fast came out. Um, I mean, big picture, hot takes. Like, we're all sort of getting our bearings. We sort of know what we're working with. But in terms of the Go Fast update, like, what are the big takeaways for you? I'll just go with likes and dislikes. I like that the Warlock Burst Glide is usable. Yeah. It felt super forcibly slow to the point where I make so many mistakes expecting it to be yeah. fast. Now it sort of goes where I want it to go in my head, so I make less mistakes. Yeah. I also like the pulse rifle changes and the 180 RPM hand cannon changes. We can talk about these like more as soon as I list them all. I dislike mobility not affecting sprint speed, even though it was the same thing in Destiny 1. I think they could further improve it by making the mobility stat tie into it. I dislike that on PC, there's a way to Titan Skate with either a scroll wheel or a macro. I dislike the 110 hand cannon compared to the pulse changes. And I dislike the extreme prevalence of power ammo. Those are my hot takes. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about this Titan Skating thing because, uh, yeah, you were real on the ball. And, uh, I mean, it's out there, you know, it's, it's built into the game. Maybe it's not the intended use, but it's part of it. Um, I mean, we've all heard about this macro, but sort of explain how, how this works. What's what's the operation here? Okay, so the human hand can only hit the jump button so fast. The macro does it consistently fast. So maybe a click every 0.13 seconds, whereas you might be able to only do it every 0.3 seconds. Who knows? And so mouse wheel is basically the same thing, right? Like instead of just like click, 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 click. Mouse wheel is the same just... thing, except you have human control. So human error can be a thing. You might hit it too fast and ruin the skate. You might hit it too slow and not skate at all. Or you might accidentally jump and continue the skate when you wanted to stop it. A macro, you're not going to have that issue because it's going to be perfect nearly every time. So, so the idea then, I mean, it's, it's not unlike D1 skating in terms of the fact that you're spamming the very first part of the jump to get that speed boost. It's just that the tolerances for doing it are really, really tight. Right. I tried to do it um, by hand like a human, and that's when I stumbled upon <laughs> using the scroll wheel to do it because it's technically not a macro. You can still make mistakes on it. And I'm still not satisfied with just using the scroll wheel. I want to be able to figure it out on a controller with some kind of weird button mapping or something. Haven't done it yet. So you can't get going fast enough to uh, kill yourself by running into a wall. Uh, so good to know that's the case. Um, do you think there's any viability for using it in the Crucible? Oh, absolutely. It sort of breaks the class balance, in my opinion, because on a Titan, you could stack either 10 Resilience, which counters a lot of things, and 7 Recovery, mm -hmm. or you can go with Feedback Fence and have 8 Resilience, which counters a lot of things, and 8 Recovery, which is very adequate. And you'll have either 1 or 0 Mobility. Here's the thing. Mobility is great for strafing. But if you can get across the map, uh, the map in Mach 5 lightning speed, be able to just snatch power ammo off somebody, even pull Acrius, which is considered a heavy weapon, and I don't mean heavy in the sense of D1, but as in the weight of the weapon is very, very heavy, so it makes you your jump arc the lower. Handling is high. making Yeah, exactly. Making you skate even faster. So now you have this trifecta. You start skating really, really fast, Acrius somebody, and you know that they're going to spawn on the opposite side of the map. But... I can Titan skate. I'm going to meet you on spawn. Just, I just killed you with Acrius. Make it across the entire map and kill you again. I've done it. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, duly noted. So you get the best of everything. You have the mobility from skating. You have the resilience. You have the recovery. And you don't even have to use an exotic to be able to Titan skate. Rampant makes it better, but it's not necessary. In fact, uh, 44 stand asides are even funnier because now you have the Acrius and Overshield skating uh, towards a Mach 5 and then just pull the trigger Acrius, catch them on spawn again. 
Okay, uh, follow-up question. Um, if I want to skate on a controller, is it true that I can just get a Mad Cats controller and it'll make it really easy to do the macro? I would say that would probably work. I haven't tried it yet. All right. I tried mapping Go all the jump button to every button on the controller and then just like spamming them. <laughs> no luck. I think I'm joking, but I might make that my profile picture on one of these social medias. <laughs> I t- tell me about this pulse rifle thing. I, I I mean I personally a pulse rifle is not my flavor. I'm I'm glad they're coming up because they were real boo boo before. But uh, I know you got a hot take. What do you think? Oh, I definitely have a hot take. Hey yo, CR, can you throw me a hot take? <laughs> got the entire squad together as soon as the update dropped. Did our usual testing. Used the Darcy to mark the meters. Shot somebody in the face. Mark down numbers, rinse and repeat. We wanted to find two things out, and that's whether ricochet rounds have changed because Bungie is really notorious for these ninja patches. I'm happy to report, or maybe not happy to report, that they have not changed. So ricochet rounds still are a hidden range finder. For those of you who don't know, if you aim down sights in Destiny 1, range finder increased the zoom a little bit, which decreased range drop off. The same can be said about ricochet rounds in Destiny 2. So that being said, there's a couple of key pulse rifles that have ricochet rounds, the Nurgle and the Impromptu. And both of those sort of break the rules of engagements on those archetypes. So maybe add five to 10 meters on that pulse rifle with ricochet rounds. It's that drastic. I mean, I I knew ricochet rounds gave you a a hidden range boost. It's not shown in the fruit space. And like conceptually, I I think um, Greg Pang confirmed this, but like, this was an intentional change because if you're planning on bouncing shots off of walls, you're going to need a little bit more range to make up for it. Um, but is it true that it it just engages when you're ads It's not something that comes into play during hip fire? I'm not exactly sure with the hip fire question. I mean, who's hip fire? But it seems like the fire. antiope is very, very strong and that has ricochet rounds. Interesting. So I haven't done really conclusive testing on whether the hip fire affects it. Uh, and it's interesting to hear you call out the the Nurgle and the Impromptu because those are not they're not guns with a ton of heat on them. Um, e- you know, even after this change, um, are those the standouts for you? Or are there? I mean, aside from the wing, are, are there any other pulse rifles worth calling out? I'll, I'll explain it with numbers because I have the numbers, luckily. So oh, the number drops off at around let's just say forty meters. That's where you're going to start missing a bullet off the kill, unless you got foe tracer. Shout out to the Potracer users. <laughs> Nurgle doesn't drop off until 55 post patch. And then we compare that to Nightshade. Nightshade starts dropping off at 45. So there's a 10 meter difference. The Vigilance Wing, fastest TTK, drops off around 45 as well. So if you're talking V Wing versus Nightshade, V Wing's going to win. V Wing versus Nurgle, Nurgle's going to win. And it's even worse with the Impromptu. Because the Impromptu with the long scope, Drops off at a whopping 67 meters. Woof. So, for comparison's sake, Mida is at somewhere around the 75 range for the drop off. So the fact that Impromptu on most maps can outshoot Mida is just crazy. (laughs) Yeah, no, that sounds pretty crazy. Those are some. Those are the stats that I I like to hear about because you know that changes. Changes a lot about what I would want to use. I'm very, very happy to report that the high impact pulses actually have some very good range to them. They're dropping off around 60 meters, and the Einstein D is even further than that, uh, rivaling Mida. I called this out a very, very long time ago when I still played PS4, saying that on the map Eternity, the Einstein is crazy good with the team shot potential on these very, very long sight lines. You could shoot a single burst of Einstein with your other three teammates having Mida and just instant kill them with all headshots. So someone makes the mistake of peeking, they're done. And then as soon as you get that opening pick, you split for map coverage, try to tell your teammates where people are and make a decision based on that. If they're all on one side of the map, you want to plan on the opposite. And just that using the Einstein lets that happen. That's interesting. And I, I like that you're calling this out because... A lot of times when we're sort of discussing, you know, like what's the best weapon use, it's exclusively about time to kill, but it doesn't really take into account the effect that that effective range has on time to kill, whether we're talking about, you know, what your engagement distance is or talking about damage drop off. 
and the types of engagements that you get into in different game modes, like it's it's a big difference, especially when you have these things that really push outside the normal range of their archetype. Yeah, I mean, people just look at a number on paper and say, this one has a faster time to kill. It's the best weapon. When in that case, it's not most of the time. And you also have to look at what your teammates are using. So you can either cover the same ranges or go opposite. So you can better counter what the enemy might be using. If everyone's using scout rifles and an auto rifle, you could pull on a submachine gun and make them wish they had a submachine gun. <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts about uh, your video this week was uh, comparing the different loadouts popular ones and the benefits of having the two primaries oh, you cover yeah. so much it's going to be even like further uh, an awesome thing with the exotic changes adding just another layer of making the right decision on the loadout because the exotics going to have the enhanced time to kill so you can have that sweet spot where you dominate a range where you cover another range adequately and another where you can't cover it at all based on your loadout decisions and it's that part where you can't cover it at all is where the enemy wants to take advantage of. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you make the the point, I mean, let's go there. Like, the, the, there's some dope diagrams in this video. Everyone go go check out Cammy's channel and watch this video, regardless of your your take on it. I think it was pretty fair and, and had, some, uh, had some good coverage. But you make a good point there, which is that, like, that, that gap that you have, because you can't cover all the ranges when you really think about engagement ranges, that gap is where your teammates make up for you. Yes. So that example I brought up with the Einstein, that gap could be made up by me maybe having a submachine gun while someone else has an auto rifle. They're going Mida auto rifle, I'm going Einstein submachine gun. So I get to cover the more closer gap. Um, okay, so, so, so walk us through this video. So this was a video about time to kill, and I think you, you managed to put in words something that had been bumping around my head for a long time because... Um, I mean, and you know, it's a hot button issue, you know, pe- people get heated on, on every side. They take it really personally. You know, yeah, you take it personally and, and <laughs> it feels like something gets lost because it's like, it's probably, it's probably the most requested, uh, item by people with no profile. Photos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, hot take. Um, <laughs> but, but, but th- I mean, I think there's something there, which is like, Look, different time to kill, you know, shorter time to kill feels different. And like, look, I don't, I mean, I played so much Titanfall 2, which is, you know, down near that Call of Duty level time to kill. Um, I mean, it's certainly something I'd like, but it's just the, the, the idea that one is good and one is bad just feels like something gets lost in the mix. I mean, talk, talk me through, what's, what, what, what's your premise here? What's the idea? Okay, so we have to pre- uh, preface this by saying... Once TTK is brought up, people take it personally. They don't look at the facts. They just insult, be very vitriolic. They don't like each other. And they put their fingers in their ears and don't listen. When it's all personal preference and opinion on whether you prefer a slower time to kill or a faster time to kill. The problem with Destiny is that it doesn't have an exact identity. So people like it for different reasons. And if they go one direction, it's really hard to also compromise in the other. So no matter what Bungie does, they will mess up in the community's eyes. I mean, I, I feel like one thing you hear a lot is that, you know, that fast time to kill, a short time to kill is good for high skill players and a slow time to kill is good for bad players. And so bad players like how it is and good players want it to be better, which doesn't feel doesn't feel 100 percent accurate. I mean, there's more to it than that, right? I'm going to come with you at this angle. Both take a lot of skill. It's just one of them affects a different skill set. So maybe fast time to kill helps people who have better reaction speed, whereas slow time to kill helps people who can tactically give information while fighting, who can aim for precision shots, and who have a real focus on movement. Because if the TTK is 0.5, then you only have half a second to show your movement prowess. Whereas it's 1.2 seconds, like better devils, you get to move around for a whole 0.7 seconds more to make them miss shots. But it also comes with the caveat that team shot maybe becomes more prevalent. But team shot isn't necessarily the worst thing. It's in every FPS. <laughs> um, this is something that like I when I started learning to play Overwatch a little bit better, I noticed like the reason it excels is because it kind of plays on all of those things where you could be smart 
and play a different hero in that game um, and s- still excel along with people that do really well with like fast reaction times. I ultimately think Bungie is going to have to lower the TTK to appease the community, but that's not a terrible thing for me. I can adapt. It's just going to tap into a different skill set, if that makes sense. So I'm not worried. Well, I mean, you, the, if you compare the um, criticisms of the two games, like Destiny 1, Destiny mm-hmm. 2, Destiny 1 was, the complaint was like, nerf, 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 nerf from a lot of people. It was. Because of how fast. Yeah. In Destiny 2, though, now it's like buff, 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 buff. Yep. Like, make it faster. Um, and, you know, it's going to, like you said, it's going to benefit certain players um, that can work with a faster mana. But you're going to see the return of the, I mean, not so much the casual players, but there's going to be people that like playing now that are going to be like, it's too fast now. And you're going to see, the like, you already see it about Vigilant Swing. People yeah, already you can't hate please Vigilant everybody. Swing. So... I mean, I'm worried that there's that there's hard lines, right? Like for a certain segment of the the community, because this was the play in D1, that if you can't three tap with most, if not all, hand cannons, then time to kill is too long. And like to be clear, you can you can three tap with a hand cannon. You just have to use an aggressive hand cannon and land your headshots. Um, and okay, maybe that's where the line is. Like as soon as you can three tap with, uh, you know, an adaptive hand cannon is when, okay, it's fast enough because it feels like the old one and I feel powerful again, whatever that means. Um, but what I hope we don't get lost in the mix is like in D2, you didn't see people strafing during engagements commonly. I mean, like, you know, there's always... Fizz out there, just left, right, left, right with his Mida and his max mobility. But it feels like it's commonly part of the the just sort of one-on-one engagements that you have to strafe, you have to mix up your left, right, left, right. You see people, um, you know, spamming crouch. You, you have people being goofy and being tricky and moving around while they're shooting their gun and fighting. Whereas in D1, you could really get by just by getting your first shot off and having good aim and not really needing to worry about that. So, uh, you know, time to kill goes down and it's faster. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Again, I'm with you. Like it's a different skill set, but it's still fun. I still like destiny. I'm still going to figure out the right way to do it, but I hope we don't lose that. I feel like everyone kind of learned how to be a sneaky strafer in D2. And I hope that that remains a requirement for being a good player. If you want to win your ones. I hope so, too. I'm really hoping the Go Fast update solidifies whatever TTK changes they're going to make, which it seems inevitable at this point. We will see. But I was uh, mentioning earlier, I made a video titled I Lost, and that's just like I lost the sense of control in this community for trying to affect the game. Because at this point, with the TTK changes, we would have gone full circle, starting off Destiny Year 1 with crazy TTKs, and then seeing community complaints over the years, leading it to the launch of D2, where they complained again, causing it to go back to something closer to Destiny 1. Maybe there's a sweet spot, but maybe we're just going full circle and we're going to eventually get back to a slow time to kill approximately 14 months from now. <laughs> I can wait that long. I, I mean... It, I think one mistake people make is taking whatever the loudest meme in the community is and attributing it to the majority of players. When the reality is, is there's lots of different people playing Destiny. People want and care about lots of different things. And I know, I mean, I, I can be unfair too, right? Like when I go on Twitter and it feels like every, like every other reply is just LOL dead game or, um, fix TTK, this is not fun. I don't feel powerful anymore. If I hear that phrase one more time, I, I, you know, did that. I could go on a tangent on that phrase. Oh, let's, let's not. I can't get enough as it is. I just like, it's easy to, to feel all that frustration and just be like, man, it'll change, but it's cool now. Can this just be f- like fun for what it is? And it'll be different. And like dig in the meantime. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's important to remember that, The people who are demanding more one-hit kills, more instant kills, faster time to kill, more one player going off against three players 
are not necessarily the same people who when you've got crazy one hit kill opportunities, when you've got the ability to map people with OP weapons, whatever that means, that those aren't often the same people. It's just that different people are allowed at different times. Sometimes it is the same people. And to them, I say, oh, take it easy, man. Just 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 take a breath. Just just <laughs> just slow your roll a little bit. But that's not everybody. There's all different kinds of players. And I think that's one thing that doing the show is taught me is that if you really get to talking with people and you kind of get past the first take and into, you know, what is it that you get out of this game and what do you want that everyone's got a different take and there's more to it than just the slogan, you know? Yep. I know for sure when we go to Seattle, that's going to be one of the things I ask is like, where is, where is the ideal? Like, where do you want this to be? Like, what are you shooting for across the board? Because is it, the mid, where's the middle ground and is that something you're sh- striving for? Yeah, that's totally valid. Uh, for me, I'm thinking to go about this a different angle. Bungie's going to do Bungie, right? But they have to have some sort of compromise to appeal to players who value something different. Now, Halo accomplished this. I bring up Halo not to talk about the TTK, but the various game modes that were in the game. If you wanted an instant time to kill, they had SWAT. Just aim for the head, they're dead. They had team snipers for people who really liked abusing what I guess you would call special ammo. Why can't Destiny have things like that? So even if they make the TTK fast enough that it's not enjoyable to somebody, why not add a trickle modifier and another modifier that maybe decreases the overall damage by 0.2? Who knows? That sounds like a clever and entirely reasonable idea, and I hate it, and I don't know why. (laughs) I want it to be my thing and just my thing, please. Uh, no, that's that's fair, that's man. A, that's a good idea. Well, I think that's a a good note to end this on for sure. For today. Cammy, this has been a blast. Thank you for coming on the show, and uh, th- I, I, you, you're rapidly becoming one of my favorite Destiny channels. Thank you for going a, a level deeper in your videos and making me go look at the title and be like, ah, I know what this is. And then get two minutes into it and go like, oh, that is not what I thought this was going to be. Uh, you make good stuff. <laughs> Keep doing it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, YouTube.com slash Gaming, Twitter.com slash YT, And I have a Discord server. Ooh. That one is discord.gg slash There Check you go. Them out. Follow them. Um, all right, man. Well, we're going to, after we have this summit and uh, everyone everyone knows exactly what it is they can and can't talk about, we're going to have to get you back on and uh, get a couple bits from you. Maybe, Swain, you can do a little field interview and we can uh, see you on the other <laughs> side of this thing. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, till next time, Swain, you want to take us out? How does this part go? Uh, yeah. Just uh, go to crucibleradio.com. You can... Do everything from there. You can buy some merch. You can join the Discord server. Uh, you can find all of our YouTube videos. It's all there. Uh, specifically, I'd ask people to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash swainstash. I'd much appreciate it. I'm trying to do more D2 streaming. Bring the community together. Check it out. Um, I guess my plug is that uh, I'm Bird's. And you never met a birds like me. That's the whole plug. And uh, <laughs> that's the Colorado. I build the soul of bones, leaving my body. Now I'm no longer calcium cakes. So <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Uh, we'll have bones back next week. Worry not. Uh, till next time, guys. Adios. See ya. I'll keep burning like a star, counting down the time till gravity makes me implode Nothing lasts forever We all extinguish in the end Just hoping I last longer than the This is Failed Astronauts. Check them out, failedastronauts.bandcamp.com. And if you're a musician, send us an email. 
Send us your stuff. Send some MP3s. We love listening to it. We love playing it on the show. All the music on our show comes from you, the listener. And it's a treat to hear. So chip in. Join the, join the music sending club. How about that? Good night, everyone. Thanks for listening. I'm just going through the motions, but I'm barely making that. I'm afraid that I What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.